Embryonic stem cells, the most pluripotent of all stem cells, are derived from embryos generated by in vitro fertilization. When fertilization is successful, the sperm head bearing the nucleus enters the egg while the tail is left behind. The fertilized egg divides first into two cells, then into four. With more divisions, a multicellular ball of cells, known as a blastocyst, is formed. If you could look inside the blastocyst, you'd discover that it's a hollow ball made up of two cell types. An outer layer called the trophoblast eventually forms the placenta. An inner cluster of cells known as the inner cell mass becomes the embryo. The inner cell mass consists of embryonic stem cells. It's possible to pick up these embryonic stem cells with a pipette and transfer them to a petri dish for culturing. Under appropriate culture conditions, these embryonic stem cells divide or self-renew and the cell mass grows. Sometimes pockets of cells will stop dividing and begin to differentiate spontaneously. Groups of cells may develop properties of mature bone cells or of pancreatic cells. Others develop into muscle cells that can contract and still others into nerve cells. Because they have the potential to become such a wide variety of specialized cells, embryonic stem cells are described as pluripotent. Pluripotency is one of two key features of embryonic stem cells. The second key feature of embryonic stem cells is their ability to self-renew indefinitely while retaining their undifferentiated pluripotent state. Small groups of cells are placed in petri dishes to divide. Cells from a single petri dish can seed many petri dishes. In this way, unlimited numbers of undifferentiated pluripotent stem cells can be produced. Embryonic stem cell technology has the potential to treat conditions such as diabetes, Parkinson's disease, and spinal cord injury. Consider juvenile diabetes as an example. In this disease, also known as type 1 diabetes, the immune system destroys insulin-producing cells of the pancreas. Insulin-producing cells, called beta cells, are normally found within cell clusters called islets of Langerhans. Beta cells function in the following way. After a meal, glucose increases in the bloodstream. Beta cells detect this glucose and release insulin into the bloodstream. Insulin then circulates throughout the body. Insulin targets many tissues in the body, including muscle cells. Insulin binds to receptors on muscle cells, signaling the cells to take in glucose. The cell responds by increasing the transport of glucose into the cell. In type 1 diabetes, the immune system destroys beta cells. Without insulin, cells cannot take in glucose from the bloodstream, and blood glucose levels remain high. Type 1 diabetes is currently treated with a daily regimen of blood testing and insulin injections. For diabetics, the hope is that embryonic stem cells can be coaxed into differentiating into functional beta cells or into entire islets of Langerhans. These beta cells or islets would then be introduced into people with type 1 diabetes to restore their ability to produce insulin. Although many hurdles must be overcome before a cure is possible, a plentiful supply of functioning beta cells would be a boon for people with type 1 diabetes.